Here's the complete plan. This is how everything comes together based on everything I've shown you so far in these recent videos. The first thing I talked to you about was what Bulletproof Bookkeeping was really all about, and I explained why that's important. Then I started getting into how to, how to make a start at getting Bulletproof Books, and the first thing I showed you was downloading and coding your transactions from the bank feeds. This helps ensure accuracy because we're relying on a third party like a bank, and they usually don't make mistakes. They can, but the truth is it's, it's much more accurate than if you manually went and tried to enter your own transactions, right? That way, it's much more likely you'd miss something or enter something at the wrong amount. So it substantially increases our chances of being accurate when we grab the data from the bank and code it that way. Okay, I've also talked to you about how going through the balance sheet, starting with that process, looking at the bank accounts, and then going through all the other accounts, is how you ultimately verify the accuracy of all of the books everywhere. And then I mentioned that if you do that with the balance sheet, the profit and loss is probably just going to be a matter of classifying things correctly in case they weren't the first time around. So how does this all come together is the final part of the verification process with respect to your bank accounts and your credit card accounts after you've done the bank feeds and coded things and making sure that you keep that up to date on a regular basis at least weekly if not more often then once a month when you get the statements you have to reconcile those accounts now some people say to me Seth why do I have to do that if I've already verified it and matched everything with the bank it should be accurate and my answer is because this assures with absolute certainty that nothing's been missed and that there's nothing in there that shouldn't be. Mistakes still happen. I've seen it with the bank feeds. We enter something manually. We also download it from the bank. We don't match it up properly. We end up with duplicates as one example. So we want to reconcile the bank account. Now here's what happens and it's tempting. Let's say you have a hundred dollar difference in your bank account and you're going to reconcile it and you're thinking it's only a hundred dollars you know, it's no big deal. Let me just plug it. It's not worth spending an hour trying to find $100, right? Here's why it is worth spending an hour trying to find $100, because it might actually be 20000 And I'll explain why. I'll share a story with you. This is a true story about a client I used to go and see on site many years ago. I was trying to reconcile their accounts. They were paying me by the hour. They didn't want me spending a lot of time chasing $100. And when the woman at the company who hired me saw me struggling with that exact scenario one day, she said, just plug it. And I said, do me a favor, give me 30 minutes. Let me research this. If I don't find it in 30 minutes, I'll plug it and I won't bill you for the time. So she said, fine. And it didn't actually take me nearly 30 minutes to figure out that we were actually missing a $10,000 deposit, which was income from one of their clients. And we were missing a $9,900 check that was made, totally unrelated to that income, that netted out to a $100 difference. But really, inside of that $100 was almost $20,000. They just were going different directions. Now, even then, you might say to me, Seth, what's the difference? The net uh, effect, income of $10,000 minus an expense of $9,900, sure, it was missing, but it's still the same $100, right? And the answer is it's not the same $100 because if I break that down individually, well, I'm missing an, a payment entirely. Let's say that vendor who I was supposed to pay that $9,900 to that I actually did reaches out to me and says, hey, Seth, uh, I never got my money. I'm going to look into that, do the research, and probably wind up paying them $9,900 again, right? So that's what we call the bullet hole method of accounting. When we plug numbers and we leave out things that might be very significant and important, um, that's the bullet hole method, right? On the other side of that, when I take the time and if you do the math, it's simple math, right? In any given month, whatever I started with in the bank, plus whatever I took in, minus whatever I took out, equals an ending balance. So it's simple math. It's simple addition and subtraction. There's no reason you can't find whatever's throwing you off, right? And the bottom line is when you do that, you have such an unshakable foundation in how accurately you've put together the books because there's no possibility that there's anything that you haven't accounted for properly. That, for example, if I'm doing your books and I've done them according to the bulletproof method and we're looking at your accounts payable, your unpaid bills, and you say, Seth, I know I've paid that bill, then I know that payment's in there somewhere. And all I have to do is find it. It's probably just not been classified correctly. Find it, code it as a payment on that bill, and we're done. And now the books are accurate. But this is actually saved me a lot of times with clients where, you know, when these things have come up and initially I could tell the client's losing confidence, like what else is wrong, right? And that's what happens when, when, you know, if an auditor comes in and sees that you've, you know, plugged a number in a reconciliation, and by the way, that can be seen pretty easily, 
uh, and if ultimately they figure out that you left out ten thousand dollars of income in a ninety nine hundred dollar expense, that it, it's not even about those two transactions and what they've uncovered as much as it's about they're going to immediately question what else is off, what else is not accurate, what else has been done sloppily, right? And going back to what I was saying about me being a consultant with clients and being in these situations, you know, I could see where the clients might be losing confidence in my job that I've done in the books until I show them, no, it's in here. I've made sure of that. I always verify that everything's accurate. This was just a classification issue. And then I usually show the client how easy it is to find and recode something. But the key is that it's already in the books. If I know it's in the books, if it's already there, very easy to run a search and find a transaction by amount, by name, any piece of information about that transaction can easily be searched to find that transaction quickly and then fix whatever was wrong. And that always restores the person's confidence, you know, when it comes up. So um, remember what I said about the balance sheet in the last video? Well, this is, as I mentioned in that video, your secret weapon. So what I want you to start doing now that you have the understanding that you do is I want you to start monthly as you reconcile the bank statements and as you reconcile your credit card statements, going through that whole balance sheet every single month, verifying that every number on that balance sheet is accurate. Once that's done, you should only need a few minutes of combing through the profit and loss statement and making sure that everything's classified correctly, that everything was picked up the way it was, right? Your total income should be accurate. And you'll know, you're the business owner, you'll know if the income doesn't look right, especially if it's way off, right? I, I've found that business owners have an uncanny ability to pick up on it when, when things don't look right, even though they may not really understand the accounting part of it. You all understand your businesses very well. And if I show you a PL that says your commissions for this month that you earned were $10,000 and you know very well what deals you've closed and what that was valued at in terms of your gross commissions before paying any expenses out, you're going to know right away if that sounds right or not. You know, or let's put it this way. If it doesn't sound right, you're going to know right away and you're going to let me know right away. That doesn't look right. And then we need to dig in and figure out what happened, what's missing, why was it missing, right? So use the balance sheet as your checklist and make sure that you reconcile the books and never plug a number. That has to be like a hard and fast rule. If you know that you've never plugged a number, then you know there's no chance anything's missing. And as I mentioned before, you know that with absolute certainty that anything that's there that shouldn't be will get flushed out because you'll be reconciling a bank statement and you'll run across a number that's in the books that doesn't show up on the statement, right? And then you'll figure out, you know, at a certain point you'll have to reverse or do whatever needs to be done about those things that never cleared. So the next video, I'm going to discuss with you some real life experiences I've had since I started putting videos out a number of years ago on how to use QuickBooks Online for real estate brokers and agents. Uh, I've done a lot of one-on-ones with a lot of you. And in those experiences, I've learned a lot. And I want to share with you some of the things I've learned uh, in ways that I think will benefit you, you know, so that you'll have an even deeper appreciation for why this stuff is so important and how valuable it really will be to you once you've really learned and taken the time to adopt a method like the Bulletproof booking me Bookkeeping Method for your real estate brokerage.